a firm foundation, the sure way. It is upon the rock of our Redeemer, who is Christ, the Son of God, that every one of us, young or old alike, must build. Why? To what end? That when the devil shall send forth his mighty winds, yea, his shafts in the whirlwind, yea, when all his hail and his mighty storm shall beat upon you and your students and your society and your own hopes and dreams, he, the devil, shall have no power over you, no power to drag you down to the gulf of misery and endless woe because of the rock upon which you are built, which is a sure foundation, a foundation whereon if men build, they cannot fall. That strength, brothers and sisters, undergirds our position on every question of doctrine, history, or church practice that can and often does arise as the work unfolds. You've heard these questions. They're not new. They first arose in the neighborhood of Palmyra when the 14-year-old Joseph first reported his heavenly vision, and they continue in one form or another to the present day. We've recently addressed a dozen or so of these issues in a series of essays desiring to be both accurate and transparent within the framework of faith. Not all gospel questions have answers yet, but they will and they'll come. In the meantime, I have a question. What conceivable historical or doctrinal or procedural issue that may arise among any group could ever overshadow or negate one's consuming spiritual conviction regarding the Father's merciful plan of salvation, His only begotten Son's birth, mission, atonement, and resurrection, the reality of the first vision, the restoration of the priesthood, the receipt of divine revelation both personally and institutionally, the soul-shaping spirit and moving power of the Book of Mormon, the awe and majesty of the temple endowment, one's own personal experience with true miracles, and on and on and on. It is a mystery to me. Talk about a question. It is a mystery to me how those majestic eternal first-level truths so central to the grandeur of the whole gospel message can be set aside or completely dismissed by some in favor of obsessing over second or third or fourth level pieces of that whole. To me, this is, in the words attributed to Edith Wharton, truly being trapped in the thick of thin things. I readily acknowledge the very legitimate inquiries of many who are perfectly honest in heart. I also readily acknowledge that everyone has some gospel question or other yet to be answered. Nevertheless, we would hope for skeptic, believer, and everyone in between that humility, faith, the influence of the Holy Spirit would always be elements of every quest for truth that foundational truths would always be the reference points in that quest, and that all other issues which may yet need resolving are pursued by study and also by faith. At the end of the day, all of us must make distinctions between the greater and the lesser elements of our testimony. For me, the greater pillars include those majestic truths mentioned earlier, their irreplaceable centrality in my life, and the realization that I simply could not live. I could not go on without them, or without the blessings I have known, or without the promises we've all been given in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So, as we speak of questions, Write this one from the Apostle Paul 
across the chalkboard of your mind and instill it in the heart of your students. I quote, For what if some do not believe? What if they don't? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Now the answer to that question is no. Not in my, not in my life, not in my lifetime. Not for me in my house. No one's belief, no one's unbelief can ever make my faith in God, my love of Christ, my devotion to this church and this Latter-day work without effect. The truthfulness of this Latter-day Gospel is in effect and it will stay in effect as long as the sun shines and rivers run to the sea and forever after that. Don't miss those blessings. In so saying, I add again the witness of that young college-aged institute, institute student we've been quoting who grew up to be the president of the church. That will be followed by the testimony of his marvelous successor, our own present beloved Thomas S. Monson. God is at the helm, never doubt it. When we are confronted with opposition, He will open the way when there appears to be no way. Let not any voices of discontent disturb you. Let not the critics worry you. As Alma declared long ago, trust no one to be your teacher nor your minister, except he be a man of God, walking in his ways and keeping his commandments. The truth is in this church, as the psalmist declared, Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. He who is our Savior slumbers not nor sleeps as he watches over this his kingdom. I testify to you that our promised blessings are beyond measure, though the storm clouds may gather Though the rains may pour down upon us, our knowledge of the gospel and our love for our Heavenly Father and of our Savior will comfort and sustain us and bring joy to our hearts as we walk uprightly and keep the commandments. There will be nothing in this world that can defeat us. My beloved brothers and sisters, Fear not, be of good cheer. The future is as bright as your faith. With conviction in my heart and eternal gratitude in my soul for the truthfulness of the restored gospel of Jesus Christ, may I close with my own echo of the counsel God has given us more than 100 times in Scripture to be not afraid, to be of good cheer. That is my message to you and the message I ask you to convey to your students. Behold, ye are little children, and ye have not yet understood how great blessings the Father hath prepared for you. Fear not, for you are mine, and I have overcome the world. And you are of them that my Father hath given me. You cannot bear all things now. Nevertheless, be of good cheer, for I will lead you along. The kingdom is yours, and the blessings thereof are yours, and the riches of eternity are yours. Wherefore, I am in your midst. I am the good shepherd. I am the stone of Israel. He that buildeth upon this rock shall never fall. And the day cometh that you will hear my voice and see me and know that I am.
that blessing uttered by the Savior of the world, I reiterate tonight and pronounce on each of you as if my hands were upon your head. As God is my witness regarding the divinity of this work, so am I his witness of it. This is the truth. In this church, you and I are engaged in the redeeming, hastening work of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The doctrine is here. The ordinances are here. The revelations are here. The future is here. It's the only sure, safe path for the children of God to follow, including his CES teachers and their students. I delight in the privilege of moving forward side by side with you on such sure, certain, sacred ground. Be not afraid. Only believe in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.